How to create a sticky vertical menu if your WordPress theme doesn't offer that option out of the box. Well, in this video, I'll show you how to create a modern sticky vertical menu with Elementor Pro. Hello, I'm your host, Casino. I'm a digital alchemist. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate the modern and beautiful sticky vertical menu of a side of the day nominee on the awards website. And for that, we use Elementor Pro only. Now, even though we'll be using the free version of the WordPress Astra theme, feel free to try out with your theme, but if you want to follow along exactly as I do, you might as well want to install Astra. It's free and it's lightweight. The only premium plugin that we'll use for this tutorial is Elementor Pro. Now, as usual, you'll find an affiliate link to Elementor Pro in the description of this video. No need to say that I do recommend Elementor Pro because I absolutely love this tool and I use it each and every day. Now, to be crystal clear, I do get a commission if you purchase through my link, but you don't pay anything extra, so you don't have to, but if you do, let me officially thank you. All right, enough talk. Let's dive in. Okay, so first let's take a look at what we are going to build. Well, initially, I googled Awards Vertical Navigation, and as you may have guessed, I landed on the Awards website, which I love, by the way. And I landed on this particular website. It's from an Italian web and graphic designer based in Amsterdam, as the title says. And, you know, initially, I'm not too much of a fan of vertical navigation, but, you know, web design is like fashion. It comes and goes. So at the very beginning of the internet, it was very common to have vertical uh, navigation. And maybe that's why I don't like it too much because to me, well, it was a bit like old school, but that, that's not always true because I've seen many people come up with very beautiful vertical navigation designs. And, but usually what I don't like is that it's taking a lot of um, screen real estate. Whereas in this version here, you click on the Navicon and then it's going to expand into the sticky vertical navigation, but it doesn't compromise with the rest of the content. And I really love that. Very minimal. And if you know anything about my channel, you know that I love minimalism. Okay, so basically this is what we want to build and we'll make it a bit different on the tablet and the mobile because let's take a look at what he did. So this is the um, tablet version. We have the social icons here. And when we click, on the Navicon, we have the sign navigation that comes from the right hand side this time. We'll, we'll have something similar, but you know, I can totally understand uh, for a graphic and uh, for a graphic designer to put um, social icons uh, here because he wants to showcase his work and maybe he wants people to go to his BN's account, Dribble, LinkedIn, Instagram, and so on. But for some other businesses, the name of the game is to keep people on your website. You know, if you think as a as a marketer, you want people to stay on your website and take some action. You don't want to send them back to the social media. Once again, that's not always the case. Some people, it's good to send them to uh, showcase their work or whatever. But if I think about my case, I wouldn't want to drive people away. So I've decided to place the icons here in the nav and give it some vi visual hierarchy to just make the, um, the local website menu more important. Well, that's just my opinion, but that's the way I see things. And for the mobile, um, if we click here, we can see that he put the icons here. And basically that's what I'm going to do also. Okay, so let's take a look at what, um, well, before we do that, let's take a look one more time at the desktop version. And now let's take a look at what I came up, what I came up with. Now, that's not a complete clone. Uh, once again, I changed the image. I'm not using video, using a, a different theme. Uh, so it says voice search will never be the same. So it has nothing to do with a, with a graphic designer. But once again, video is very beautiful and very nice, especially for a, a graphic designer. But for some other businesses, actually, most of the time, uh, a static image converts better. Now, if you want some still some animation, then some really subtle uh, Ken Burns effect can work. And that's what you see here on screen. So very slow, uh, but s s a little bit of animation. Once again, that's not a, a, a definite rule. You can use video, you can have great results with videos. I'm just talking about the results that I got 
from my own websites or for some, from some clients' statistics. And usually it works better with a static image. Okay, so uh, here is a compromise. It's not a video, it's not a static image, but just some nice Ken Burns effect. Okay, enough talk. Once we click on the Navicon, you can see here we have uh, the effect that we wanted. So let's take a look. Okay, the only thing that's, uh, well, not the only thing, but the main thing that's different is that when you click here, the whole menu is here. Uh, whereas here, let me close and open. See, it comes one after the other. You could also achieve that here, and there are different ways you could achieve it. You could uh, create four different menus, you know, and just load them sequentially, but that's not uh, the best thing to do. Uh, you could use buttons. Well, there are many different ways you could do it. But uh, for the sake of uh, keeping this tutorial short enough, because it's already going to be a long video, so um, I went simple here. Simple, but I'm trying to make it look beautiful. So we also have the social icons here. Okay, and if we move to the tablet version, as I said, uh, instead of placing the social icons here, I've placed the social icons here at the bottom. And I gave it some visual hierarchy also, because this looks more important than the social icons. But if people want to go and have a look, they can still do it. Same thing for the mobile. If we click, that's uh, how it looks like. Okay, so that's what we're going to build in this video. Now, the only premium um, plugin we're going to use in this video is Elementor Pro. Uh, for the rest, we're going to use the Astra theme, the free version of the theme. So if you're using the Hello uh, theme or any other theme like Ocean WP, you should be all right. But if you really want to follow uh, step by step what I'm going to do, you might as well install Astra. Uh, it's the free version, so there's nothing to pay. And at least you're sure that you can really follow along uh, with what I'm doing. Now, uh, if you know Elementor Pro, then I don't need to convince you. But if you don't, you may be thinking, why should I need uh, Elementor Pro? Because the free version is already that good. Why would I need Elementor Pro? Well, apart from the fact that if you want to follow this uh, tutorial, you need Elementor Pro. But the rest is that, for example, you have the theme builder. Well, I'm not going to go through all of the features. Um, I want to move on with the tutorial. But if you're wondering why you should get Elementor Pro, uh, some, some of the main elements for me are the theme builder, actually. Uh, you can theme elements, the header, the footer, the archive page, um, WooCommerce pages. You can get a, a sticky header. Uh, you can uh, change the template for the blog post. So, for example, let's say you have 500 blog posts on your current website and you want to move on to Elementor. Well, you could just style one once the, um, the single post template and apply to all of your 500 blog posts. Ain't that great? So for the rest, I'm not going to go through every everything. There's a lot of uh, pro features, but I'm just going to put a link in the description of this video. And as usual, it's an affiliate link. You know the drill. Okay, and for the pricing, it's 49 bucks per year, so approximately 14 cents per day. Now, that, that's for one website. Now, I can totally understand that for some people, 49 bucks can be, can be uh, too much because it depends on where you're living or maybe not even where you're living, maybe you're in a bad, a bad financial state. So I can totally understand that. The advice I always give is try to make some money back with a project. Try to make a beautiful website, try to sell it to someone who needs uh, a beautiful website and everybody needs a beautiful website. What I'm trying to say is try to make some money back first just work with the free version of Astra or Ocean WP and Elementor. And once you made a little bit of money back, it's a good thing to invest in your business, in yourself. And when I say invest in yourself and in your business, it's getting some pro tools that's going to just make your life way easier. And if you're wondering how you could make some money back, how you could sell your services, just go through the, um, the videos on my channel. Look at the titles because I have a few uh, videos just about that. How to make some passive income, uh, how to make money with web design. Just go through the videos. All the keys are in there.
Okay, with that out of the way, uh, let's move to the WordPress admin. And the first thing we want to do is go to appearance themes and we want to install the Astra theme. Now I've already installed it, but if you want to know how to do it, click on add a new theme. Then you're just going to type Astra. It's going to look for it. And then you will click on install and then you will click on activate. Mine is already installed, but I'm just going to make sure and activate it. Okay. So now it's activated. The next thing you want to do is you want to um, add some plugins. So we're going to add Elementor. First, you need to add the free version. So for that, you will go to add new. Then you type Elementor and click on install and activate. So I'm not going to go through all of that. Next, you need to download and install Elementor Pro from the Elementor website. And we'll also install another plugin called Sticky Menu, but we'll touch on that later. Okay, next you want to go to Pages, Add New. And we're going to add a new page. We're going to call Home. And because I'm using Astra, I'm just going to disable the title here because I don't want it to show it by default. So click on Publish once you're happy with that and uh, we're not gonna edit the page right now so go to settings reading and for the home page we're going to select a static page and we're going to select the uh, the page that we just created that we called home for the rest uh, we're going to select each article in the feed to summary not that it really does matter here because it's just a tutorial it's just a good habit to take and we're also going to discourage search engine from indexing this website. So click on save changes. Okay. So once we've done that, let's go back to our dashboard. And the next thing we want to do is to create a menu. So actually let's go to appearance menus and we're going to create a new menu that I call main menu. Then click on create menu. I'm going to add the home page to that menu and then I'm going to add some fake custom links. So the first is going to be who am I? Second is going to be some projects and the third is going to be contact me. So next, make sure you tick the primary menu option and click on save menu. Okay, so that's it for this first step. And in the next step, we're going to actually edit our homepage. So in this section, we're going to edit our homepage. So in WordPress, go to pages, all pages, and then uh, hover over the homepage and click on edit. And next, click on edit with Elementor. Okay, great. So the first thing we want to do is to set our fonts and colors so click on the, the navicon here on the top left corner of the window then click on default fonts and as you can see i've already added montserrat for each font here so just click on the drop down and you can start typing the font that you want next for the colors uh, same place click here on the navicon in the top left corner of the window then click on color picker and basically you can use the, the colors that you want, but if you want to follow along, uh, I, I, I will be using this one here. So it's 423EB2, F5, 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 and 405, 4B2. Okay. So if you change any color, you will click on the apply button here. Okay, next we want to start creating our section. So click on the plus icon here and we're going to use a one column section. We want it to be full width. We want uh, no gap and we want the height to be a minimum height of 100 VH. Okay, column position. We're going to keep it in the middle for the time being. And for the rest, we're not going to touch anything here. Okay, next move on to the style tab and we're going to add a slideshow. So click on slideshow 
and we need to select some images. Now I've already uh, uploaded a couple of images. Now why a couple? Um, it's a slideshow, but initially I just wanted to have one picture with a Ken Burns effect, but for some reason it doesn't work if you only have one picture. So you need to have a couple. So what I did is I just duplicated one picture and changed the file name. So I'm just going to create a new gallery and I'm going to insert the gallery. Now we'll come back later to the Ken Burns effect because um, actually it's, act it's using some resources. So while we're doing the tutorial, um, I don't want to use too much resources because I'm um, <clears throat> capturing the screen at the same time. And also I don't want you to be distracted. So we'll do that at the end. Okay. For the moment, you can see that it's just uh, changing and fading the images. So I'm just going to remove the infinite loop. So it would only do it once. And we'll come back to this later. Okay, now the background overlay. So click on classic. We're going to select our blue color. And actually we want to give it an opacity of roughly 80%. Yep. Okay. So, well, it's 80% here. Um, by dragging the, dragging the opacity down to 80 and it's 0 0.5 here but it's the value by default okay so uh, next we want to add a title so click on the widgets icon and we're going to drag a heading right here so we want to make it on h1 we want to center the text and we want to style it so go to the style tab text color should be white and for the typography, we're going to change the weight to bold and we're going to transform it to uppercase. Now let's go back to the content tab and I'm just going to type um, voice search will never be the same. Okay, um, next we want to add a button. so. Let's click on the widgets icon. I'm just going to drag and drop a button here. So I want to center it. I'm going to type meet the future. And for the link, I'm just going to link to the discover section that we haven't created yet, but we'll come back to that later. And for the rest, we want to move to the style tab. We want to select a background color of our blue color. Text color should be white. And on hover, we actually, let me go back. I'm going to select our blue purplish color for the normal state. And on hover, I'm going to select our blue color. And the text color should still be white. For the hover animation, we're going to use the float animation. So that's what it does. The border radius, we want to add 50 to have that nice round um, uh, round styling. And for the padding, we're going to unlink the value and it's going to be 15 on top, 70 on the right, 15 at the bottom and 70 on the left hand side. Okay, so looking good, but in my opinion, it's way too close. So let's select our heading then move on to the advanced tab and we're going to unlink the margin values. Now I want to add 30 pixels at the bottom to give some nice spacing between the title and the button and 90 pixels at the top because I don't want the text to be um, too high on the image. Okay, so that looks good. Let me add a second section. Um, actually, we're going to add it from a template. So click on the folder icon here, then click on blocks, and we're going to select the second one here. So click on insert. Okay, next, uh, make sure you select the section, go to the style tab, and we're going to change the color to our blue. Whereas for the text, um, we're going to change the text color to white and drag the opacity down a little bit. 
Okay. Okay, and um, we need to give it a name. If you remember, let's look at our button. So if I click on the edit icon for the button, go to the content tab, a link to um, hashtag discover. So the hashtag is for the ID, the pound sign. So now I'm just going to copy discover without um, the pound sign and move on to the second section. So click on the edit section, six little dots here. And next, I'm going to go to the advanced tab, ID, and I'm going to paste discover. So let me just update the page. And now if you go into preview mode, when you click on the button, it goes straight to the discover section. And that's what we wanted. Okay, so that looks pretty much uh, like what we wanted. But now we need to take care of the tablet version. So let's take a look. Looks good in my opinion, but still I'm going to give it some padding just to be on the safe side. So click on the um, column icon here, then move on to the advanced tab. I'm just going to unlink the padding values. And I'm just going to make sure I have 50 pixels on the right and 50 pixels on the left hand side. Now let's move on to the mobile. And here, once again, I'm going to select the column, go to the advanced tab, and link the values and here I want 20 pixels on the right hand side and 20 pixels on the left hand side okay so that looks good to me now let's update our page and there you go let's take a look and it works great so that's it for this step and in the next step we'll take care of actually styling the page template for the whole website in this step, we're going to alter the WordPress page template with Elementor Pro. We're going to add the vertical navigation as well as the tablet and mobile versions. Now, I know that with Elementor Pro, there's a header and footer themer, but as I mentioned, it doesn't come out of the box for a sticky vertical nav, so that's precisely what we're going to do with a little workaround. So, the first thing you want to do is go to Templates Theme Builder, then uh, move on to the single tab and we're going to add a new single uh, template. So select the page type and we're going to call it vertical nav page template or we can call it however you want but that's how I call it vertical nav page template. Then click on create template and we're not going to use a uh, predefined template so just close that so the first thing you want to do is actually go to the settings so the little little uh, gear icon in the bottom left corner and then for the page layout we're going to select elementor canvas okay so as you can see with the elementor canvas um, type of page there's no header and no footer and that's precisely what we want because because we are going to build our own so just to save our work, let's publish our page and we want to include it uh, to all pages. But if you just wanted that uh, template to be applied for a specific page, you can play with the options here. You can also apply it to posts or different type of uh, custom post types. But not to confuse you, just click on add condition and that comes by default. So just click on save and close. So next we want to create a section with two columns okay so uh, let's start styling it so first you want the content width to be full width you want no gap for the columns and for the height you want a minimum height of 100 vh you want the column position to be stretched so it, go, it goes all the way to the top okay uh, we're not going to play with vertical alignment and overflow at the moment. So let's uh, go to the advanced tab and we want zero padding and zero margin. Okay. Once you've done that, click on the first column and you want to give it a 5% width. Now to help us, let's take a look at what we want to achieve. This is what we want to achieve. 
and this is what we have uh, currently. Well, we haven't refreshed the page yet, but this was uh, what we had at the beginning. But this is what we want to achieve. So if I go back here, we can see we have one column here, and then we have the content here. That's uh, what we see here. And here we have the logo, then the Navicon, then the social media icons. Okay, so let's go back. And I don't know if you can see here, we have a box shadow. It's very subtle, um, but when you expand, you can, you can see it. Okay, so let's go back. Make sure the column is selected. So we want to go to the style tab, border, box shadow. And we want to actually change the box shadow to around 15%. So let me change that, 0.15. Okay, and for the rest, it's fine. So you can't really see it right now, but don't worry, you'll see it. Okay, so next we want to go to, uh, click on the widgets icon and we want to drag an icon. Okay, so first of all, we want to change the, uh, the actual icon. So click on the icon and I'm going to type paper because that's what I used in the demo. But of course, you could use an image because right now I'm using an icon, but unless you've changed your logo into an icon, which you can do now with, um, I mean, you can uh, take your logo, make it into an SVG, and then you can upload it as a font uh, with Elementor Pro. But we're not, we're not gonna touch on that in this video. So let's say you had an image, uh, you would click here on the um, uh, widgets icon, then you would just drag an image here and select your image, but we're not going to do that today. Okay, so let's start our icon. So first it's supposed to be uh, a logo, a homepage logo. So we're going to add a link to the home to the homepage. So instead of copy and pasting the link of your website, you can click on dynamic and click on site URL. So now it's a link and when people click, they will go back to the homepage, which is what most users expect when they click on the logo of your website. Next, we want to click on style and we're going to change the primary color to black and the hover color to blue. And we want to give it a float hover animation. There you go. And for the size, let's try yeah, 33 is nice. But let's take a look at the example. Actually, it's bigger, so let me edit that, make it bigger, 45, okay. Next, we want to add a Navicon, so we're just going to duplicate that icon. Make sure you're edit, editing the second icon. And this time, we want to remove the site URL link. We want to change the uh, icon to lines. So I'm going to use the these lines, but oh, otherwise I think you can use, okay, not hamburger. Um, how did they call it? They called it bars. You could use that one, but I'm going to use lines. Okay, and I want to go to style and make it 25. Okay, next I want to add some social icons. So click on the widgets icon, type social, and that's the first one that comes up. Okay, so it's a line in the middle, fine. Let's move on to the style tab, custom color. For the primary color, you wanna drag the uh, opacity all the way down. And for the secondary color, we're going to choose black. Okay, for the size 18 should be fine. Padding one and the spacing zero so that it's perfectly vertically aligned. Okay, next for the icon hover, we want to change the secondary color to blue. Okay, and we want to add a float hover animation so that we stay consistent with the other icons. Okay, so looking good, but as you can see the example, um, first of all, there should be some space between the edges and also 
the positioning of uh, the various elements is not the same. We want to be all across the, the height of the column. So click on the column icon, then move on to the layout tab. And in vertical line, we're going to choose the space between option. There you go, looking much better. And next, click on the advanced tab, unlink the padding values, and we want to give it a top padding of 30 pixels and a bottom padding of 30 pixels. Okay, so looking much, much better. Okay. Next, uh, once we've done that, looks fine. Click on the second column icon here. Move on to the advanced tab and we want to give it padding of zero just to be sure that, uh, for example, if you put it, uh, an image in, in there, you don't want any padding, you want to be really full width. So zero and click on the widgets icon and we want to add post content. And because we are editing a actually a, a theme template with Elementor Pro, we have some other options here for the single type. So you want to drag the post content right here. There you go. And it uh, automatically loaded our home page, which is the only page we have, I think, at the moment. So by default. Okay, so this is our page. But the image is not showing, so I'm just going to refresh the page once I've saved. Make sure you save before you do that. But this is what I've done. So as you can see, now we see the image. Now let's go back to the front end. So this is what we had. And now there, let me refresh the page. Yay. Much better. But as you can see, there's a, there's a problem because the um, now the icons are stretching all the way across the content. So if the content was even longer, you wouldn't even see the Navicon here. Now this is not what we want. And for that, of course, I have a solution. So let's go back. And let's go back to WordPress, go to plugin, add new. And you want to look for a plugin that's called sticky menu. So just type sticky menu and it's the first one. So it's sticky menu or anything on scroll. Now I've already installed it. So I just clicked on install and I haven't activated. So we're going to do it together. So click on activate. There you go, it's activated. Next, you want to click on settings. And basically, there's only one thing you need to do here. You need to add what you see here on screen. So dot my nav. Well, you can call it the way you want, but if you want to follow along uh, with the tutorial, I called it my nav. So if you're not familiar with CSS, don't be scared. All you need to do is copy and paste. And if there's any code, you will find it in the companion blog post. But for the time being, you just need to write uh, dot my nav. And we just want to copy the my nav part without the dot. Okay. If you're familiar with CSS, then you know what I'm doing. If you don't, basically, this is the class. Um, and we're going to reference that class name in Elementor. So save the settings and you're going to understand in a moment. So let me go back to our first column. So I'm just going to click on the column and now I'm going to go to the, the advanced tab and I'm in CSS classes. I'm going to paste my nav uh, with that the dot. Okay. So let me update that. And now if I go back here and refresh the page, as you can see now it's sticky, but now we have another issue. Instead of um, stretching all the way across um, what's seen on screen, it's all, uh, it's all narrowed here and that's not what we want. But of course, there's also a solution for that. So let's move back and I hope you're not scared with CSS, now don't worry. So just refresh the page so we have the exact view. So this is the view that we have in the front end also. Select the, um, the column and uh, what we want to do is go to the advanced tab, 
custom CSS and we want to type dot my nav open and close brackets height colon 100 VH and voila completely magic um, there's another way we can do it I mean this is the um, yeah this is the, the the best way to do it you just type the, the name of the class that we reference into the sticky menu plugin and it's it's gonna work fine so if I go back to the front end refresh now it works fine we can scroll and here it stays sticky okay but there's another way we could do it and this is really um, specific to Elementor don't try to do that with regular CSS instead of my nav we can just use selector and the same thing happens it's exactly the same thing so let's update let's refresh and it still works the same so if you want to if you don't want to type the um, the class name we can use selector but I'm just gonna keep my nav now the custom CSS feature of Elementor Pro is very handy but usually I prefer to have most of my CSS in one spot so it's easily to I mean it's easy to to edit if you want to edit some code just imagine you have 200 pages and you have bits of CSS code here and there it can be a nightmare to find where is the CSS unless they come up someday with um I don't know a custom CSS finder maybe it's already available I don't know but basically this is just a tutorial so I'm not going to do a full course on how to manage your CSS classes but basically keep that in mind but for the time being I'm just going to leave it the way it is okay so that works fine but now let's go back to the front end and let's move on to the tablet version let's refresh and as you can see it doesn't look that good so let's go back and let let's fix that okay so first of all you want to go into tablet mode and I'm going to select our first section go to the advanced tab responsive and I want to hide that first section on tablet and on mobile so I'm just going to update okay and next I'm going to open the navigator so at the in the bottom left corner of the window click on navigator or you can use a uh, keyboard shortcut command plus I on the Mac and I guess it's control plus I on Windows but not sure you let me know so once you're in the navigator you can expand the section so this is our first column uh, actually I'm going to rename it vertical nav so that it's easier and the second column is the content okay so the vertical nav we don't want to see it so I'm just going to click on the little eye here because even though I've mentioned I don't want to see it responsively on the tablet and on the mobile because I'm logged in as an admin and I'm actually editing the page I'm still seeing it so that's why I click on the little eye here now there seems to be a bug because it shouldn't be showing that space here but it's going to fix itself in a moment so next I want to click on the uh, content column and I want to give it 100% okay there you go so let me click on update and as I mentioned before sometimes these kind of bugs happen um, I'm not gonna say it's completely normal but it's not the first time in most of the tutorial I get across these bugs so all you do is refresh the page once you have saved the page okay so let's go back into tablet mode let's hide our vertical nav and let's move on to our content tab we still have that vertical space here but look if I click on section and then I'm just going to add a new section so let's click on the plus icon and we're going to add a section with two columns as you can see the the big white space we had just disappeared so make sure you're editing the section and we're gonna uh, start styling it so we want it to be full width we don't want any uh, column gap the height should be a minimum height of 90 pixels so 90 the column position yeah should be in the middle 
Okay. Next, we want to add um, our logo and the Navicon. So for that, we're just going to re-enable the vertical nav just here in the in the current view. So I'm just going to copy the icon and paste it here. And I'm going to copy the Navicon and I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so once I've done that, I can uh, once again, hide the vertical nav. Okay, so first I want to select the column, go to advanced, and I want to give it zero padding. Next, I want to click on the uh, icon. I want to align it left. Then I want to click on the second column, advanced, zero padding, and I want to click also on the icon and I want to align it right. Now back at column level here, so click on the column icon, go to the layout tab and vertical align to the middle so that it's, it's vertically centered. And even though it seems like we don't need it here, just to be on the safe side, let's do the same thing for the first column. So click on edit column, layout tab, vertical align, middle. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the problem we have is that it's way too close to the edges. So click on the section, click on advanced, and link the padding values. And you want to give it 30 pixels right and a 30 pixels left padding. And as you can see, it's looking much, much better. Okay, next we want to make this uh, sticky. So first select the column, go to the style tab, Click on the classic background type and give it a white color. I know it already looks white, but actually it's just transparent. And because the, um, the main color when there's nothing is white behind, then it looks white. But if you use it as a sticky, it would be transparent. So that's why we make sure we give it um, a white background, solid background color. Okay, so still with our section um, in focus, Go to the advanced tab, motion effects, sticky and click uh, on select top. Okay. We don't want it to be sticky on the desktop. So just remove desktop. So it's just going to happen on the tablet and the mobile. And while we're at it, just go to the responsive tab and make sure that the whole section is hidden on desktop because we already made the um, the um, I mean the same thing for the vertical nav we made sure that it was hidden on tablet and on the mobile and we need to do it the other way around for this section we only want it to show on tablet and on mobile so click on update now let's move back to the front end of our website let's refresh the page and as you can see it works fine now of course we haven't created the uh, the off canvas navigation yet so when we click on it nothing happens but that's completely normal for the moment so that's looking good now let's take a look at the mobile version let's refresh not quite what we wanted so let's go back let's go into mobile mode Okay, so first we're going to select our section, go to advanced and link the padding values. And this time we're going to give it a 20 pixels right and a 20 pixels left padding. Okay, next we want to select our first column and in the layout tab we want to give it a column width of 50%. Okay. And let's do the same thing for our second column. We want to give it 50%. Okay, now for each column, go to the advanced tab. Make sure it's, it has zero padding. Okay. And back at uh, the section level, so click on the six little dot here or select the section in the navigator. Go to the layout tab. And for the minimum height, we want 65 pixels okay so looking good but the navigation is a bit i mean the uh, navigation icon is a bit big and well i didn't mean navigation icon. i mean the um, the home uh, the logo of the website sorry so 
I'm just going to go to the style tab and I'm going to play around with it. Yeah. Okay. 28. That's fine. Okay. So now let's go back to the front end. Let's refresh our page. Yep. Looking much, much better. Now, just to be sure, let's click on our column and make sure it's vertically aligned also. Although it looks already um, aligned, but just to be on the safe side. And click on update once you're happy with it. Okay, so that's it for this step. And in the next one, we'll create our off canvas navigation. In this step, we're going to create our off canvas navigation. So in WordPress, go to templates, pop-ups, and we're going to create a pop-up. So let's call it pop-up off canvas navigation. Click on create templates. And as usual, you, uh, you can use predetermined, uh, predefined templates, but we don't want that. So close that. Next, click on the plus icon and we want a two columns pop up and we want to start editing the pop up settings first. So at the bottom left corner of the window, click on the settings uh, icon. So the little gear icon here and we can start styling it. So for the width, select VW and give it a value of 33. The height should be custom and it should be a value of 100 VH. Content position should be top. Horizontal should be on the left hand side. Uh, for the rest, overlay close button is fine. We want slide in left as entrance animation and slide out left as exit animation. And the animation duration should be 0 0.2. So very fast. Okay, next uh, you want to click on the style tab. You, you want to give it a uh, blue overlay. So let's select our blue color. Okay, make sure it's uh, 0 0.8 right here. So by dragging here, you can play with it. And just to be sure, yeah, 0 0.8, okay. Next, click on the close button. And for the close button, we want it inside. So by default, we want the color to be black. Size should be 30. And next, click on the hover uh, tab and we want to change the color to blue. There you go. Okay, so let's take a look at our page let's look at the initial example when we click this is what we want okay so let's go back and before we do anything here we're going to publish our pop-up add a condition uh, include on the entire website click next we're not going to add any triggers and no advanced rules for the time being so click on save and close okay so now that it's updated we can temporarily move back to the page template that we edited in the previous step. And now we're going to click on the Navicon. So here we are on the mobile and tablet version. So edit the Navicon. And in the content tab, we want to, to add a dynamic link. So where it says link, here you find dynamic on the right hand side. Click on it and then we're going to add a pop-up. So click on actions pop-up. And once you've done that, click on the little wrench icon next to pop up then click on all. And in the search engine, you can start typing the name of the pop up that we've just created and saved. That's why I started by pop up. It's, it's easier to find. So pop up of canvas navigation. OK, and I want to repeat the operation for the other Navicon for the vertical nav. So dynamic. Add a pop up wrench icon search engine and type pop-up okay click on update and now uh, let's go and have a look so this was the initial example and now let's move to our current website 
let's refresh the page now if i click on the navicon yes it works it's nothing but it works okay so we can close that and go back to elementor okay so the next thing you want to do is you want to click on the first column so by the way we're still in the page template so click here on the first icon uh, on the first column right click and click on copy okay next we want to go back to the pop-up that we were editing just before that and first of all you want to um, start our section so click on the six little, little dots to edit the section or just click on the section here in the navigator and then we want to change that to full width columns should be no gap the minimum height should be 100 vh and the column position should be stretched so that the all the content is stretched vertically okay next we want to click right click on the first column and click on paste and there you pasted the, um, the column that we just copied from the page template so once you're happy with that right click on the first column and delete the first column now if you recall in the page template the column width was five percent and that's when um, this is the full page so full page is 100 percent, and we take five percent now here in the pop-up the whole pop-up is a third of the page so only 33 percent and if you want to maintain the same um more or less the same width we need to do five percent times three now, i was not the best in math but i hope it makes sense so make sure you, you select the first column and now we want 15 percent okay you want to maintain the same uh, ratio as you can see it's more or less the same okay so uh, let's just update our page so with our first column being uh, selected move on to the advanced tab and you want to make sure of two things first of all is that the z index is set at 10 we want to make sure that it's on top of everything else and uh, you want to remove the my nav class now why would you want to do that because as you can imagine I tested before um, shooting this tutorial and for some reason having the my class both uh, here in the off canvas navigation and on the page template right here caused some issues so let's go back to the the column so i'm in the page template here we can leave the my nav but if i move back to the pop-up no mind no my nav so the off canvas navigation class should be empty and if i move back to the page template there you should have the my nav actually we also going to give it um a z index of 10. make sure it's above the rest of the content and in the off canvas navigation let's give it 11. now you may be wondering why do we have the same column in two different um, pieces of content because if you want if you want to change something in one it means you would have to change it um, in two places and that's true but if we uh, go back and look at the uh, the initial model what we want is that when people click um, we can still see the the bar here and then it expands now initially what i wanted to do is just to have one um one one column here that will be on top of the extension playing with the z index but for some reason it doesn't work so that's the only work around that i found okay so let's go back to what we currently have still empty okay now let's go back to editing our um, pop-up so once we've done that that seems to be fine now we can start styling our second column so click on the second column move on to the style tab background type classic and we want to select our f5 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 color and it doesn't show now 
uh, we just need to add some some content so click on the uh, widgets icon and you can start typing nav menu so i'm just going to drag and drop the nav menu here and as soon as i've done that you can see the color appearing so let's select our column layout tab and we want to vertically align it to the middle okay next click on the uh, nav menu edit icon and we can start styling it so we want our layout to be drop down and we want the toggle button to be set to none okay so that looks fine but uh, we need some space around the edges so let's click on the column um, icon then move on to the advanced tab and let's give it a 30 pixels padding all around looks much better once we've done that go back to editing the nav menu so click on the edit icon let's move on to the style tab and the first thing you want to do is to drag the opacity of the background color to zero and you want to repeat the operation also for the hover state and for the active state next let's go back to the normal state text color should be black and on hover it should be blue and same thing for the active tab okay next we want to edit the typography so let's give it a side of 28 let me take a look yeah um so 28 wage be bold and you want to transform it to uppercase and let's give it a letter spacing of one okay fine so let's click on update and now let's go back to our current website let's refresh and by clicking on the navicon yep that's what we wanted so we can click on the cross we can click here in the overlay or we can just um, type on the escape key on our keyboard and the result is the same so mission accomplished for uh, the desktop now we we'll still need to add the ken burns effect but we do that right at the end okay but let's take a look at the mobile doesn't look good and the tablet nope that's not what we want okay so let's go back and now let's move on to tablet mode first of all let's select our pop-up settings by clicking on the uh, gear icon in the bottom left corner of the window and once again uh, we are going to hide the vertical nav now just to be sure let me put it back just to be sure select the vertical nav go to advanced responsive and just really make sure that it's hidden on tablet and on mobile then you can uh, hide it from the admin view also by clicking on the little uh, eye here as we've done before okay so next uh, once again click on the settings icon for the pop-up and you should see pop-up settings here just if you want to be sure you're editing the at the right spot and we can start styling for the tablet so for the width we want to give it a uh, ver uh, vw of 66 the custom height should be still 100 vh the uh, horizontally should be aligned on the right hand side and for the rest the sliding animation should come from the right and it should go back to the right so slide out right slide out right and we still have an animation duration of 0.2 seconds so very fast now as you can see here we can see now some white space here so to fix that we're just going to go back to the style tab background type color and we're going to select the same color that we have here in the column so f5 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 okay so it's already looking much better now if you recall um, let's look at the previous uh, i mean at the initial model when you click 
uh, while you're in, in tablet version, you can see some icons here, social icons. And if you look at our current version, if I refresh, I haven't saved yet, so let me save. Let's refresh. We're lacking the social icons. So let's go back to Elementor. And for that, we're going to reactivate the vertical nav. I mean, just the view in admin. And we're going to copy the social icons module. And once we've done that, we can hide uh, once again the, the vertical nav. Okay. Now, click uh, right click on the um, uh, nav menu here and click on paste. And there you go, we have our icons here, but these icons would also appear on the desktop and we don't want that because in desktop, there's already a vertical navigation with social icons. So make sure you select the icons, go to the advanced tab, responsive, and make sure you hide it on the desktop. Okay, once you've done that, go to the uh, content tab and align the icons on the left. Okay, so looking great. But um, as I explained earlier, I want some visual hierarchy. So I want to add some space here. So let's click on the nav menu edit icon. Go to the advanced tab. Let's unlink the values, uh, the margin values, and we're going to give it a 200 uh, pixels bottom margin. So let's update. Now let's refresh. And that's looking fine. Okay, so next, uh, what I want to do is set things for the mobile. So for the mobile, first thing first, doesn't look good. We need to make this wider. So click on the settings here, uh, the pop-up settings. So at the bottom left corner of the screen, the width, the VW should be um, let's say 85 the height should be custom and it should be 100 vh just like the rest still horizontally on the right hand side and we want the sliding oops sliding animation to come from the right and we want it to slide out right also 0 0.2 uh, of animation duration still Okay, and then we want to start editing our nav menu. So click on edit nav menu, go to the style tab, and let's put a size of 22. Looks fine. Then move on to the advanced tab and link the margin values. And this time we're going to give it a, a, a margin bottom of 100 pixels. Click on update. Now Let's check our mobile version, refresh, looking great. So let's go back to editing our page. As I said, we're going to add the can burns effect. So with the navigator open, make sure you select the first section. So just to make sure we are not editing the pop-up uh, for the off, -can off canvas navigation, and we're not editing the page template. We're just editing the regular page, um, the home page, actually. So uh, if you want to be sure, let me go back. All pages. So this is our home page. Click on edit with Elementor in, ca in case you closed it. OK, so we're going to edit our page. So select the first section here. Go to the Style tab. And here where uh, it says Background, you want to add an infinite loop, change the uh, duration value to 30,000 milliseconds. So it's 30 seconds. And we want to switch on the Ken Burns effect. So click on Update. There you go. Next, let's refresh our page. And as you can see, we have this very subtle Ken Burns effect. You can click on the button, it goes to the next section. And uh, our sticky navigation is very subtle, very minimal. And when we click on it, 
it expands the off canvas navigation now if we move on to the tablet mode and refresh our page see the volcan burdens effect and a very beautiful off canvas navigation that comes from the right with dedicated icons social icons and last but not least especially in terms of traffic nowadays the smartphone the mobile so click on the navicon and once again we have a beautiful navigation coming from the right and uh, with social media icons and sliding back to the right so once again let's have a look at our desktop version and there you go so we've covered a lot of ground so congratulations if you uh if you're still here watching this video and even better if you can implement it and create your own you know i'd be thrilled to to see what you come up with so let me know in the comments and i really hope you enjoyed this uh tutorial this is um the, the you know the, the tiny little details that can make your design stand out so i really want to thank that designer and you know i'm grateful to have websites like awards and others that showcase the best of the best and it really inspires us now once again this is not about stealing someone else's work um, but this is about knowing how to recreate the things that you see so now it's your turn to get creative now if you're interested in purchasing elementor pro as mentioned at the beginning of this video you will find an affiliate link in the description below now if you enjoyed this video please like it as it really 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 helps growing this channel and if you know someone that could benefit from it please share it now you see how long this tutorial is now would you believe me if i told you that i recorded everything and then it was like recording for two hours you know i started preparing in the morning uh, actually i started working the day before trying to find the id uh, then try try to uh, recreate what i was trying to create then try to take it step by step you know recreate it a few times then i record two hours then i'm so happy it's like the end of the day but i think i can still make it editing and everything and then my screen for uh, screen flow crashes and i lost everything you know i was trying to uh, uh recover the, the 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 raw footage but wouldn't work spinning wheel of death <laughs> so i can laugh about it now but you should have seen my face while I was experiencing it, you know, but I started right away. I was like, no, man, no way. So I started right away. So my hope is that it helps, even if it helps one, one person, you know, that would be worth it. And that's the kind of thing that happens. You know, I've heard other YouTubers that, you know, were explaining that, but when you're on the other side of the screen of the, of the camera, yeah, you hear it and yeah, it can be tough, but I don't really, really realize what went into this. It's not bad because um, actually it was easier to do the second time around. So, and he taught me a lesson or two uh, <laughs> about the software I'm using, which is a pretty good software and uh, the hardware is good also. It's just that it was way too long. And of course, when I, when I try to save, if anything happens, then you lose everything. So now I'm saving in smaller chunks, which is something I know I should have done from the get go. But you know how it goes, you know things, but you still do things your way. So, well, I hope you enjoyed the video if you watched it or if you save it for later. Um, I hope that you really, really gonna enjoy that tutorial. Um, I spent a lot of time creating it, but actually I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, doing it the second time wasn't the most fun but actually once i was into it you know it was it was way easier so all that long talk just to let you know what happened behind the scenes because that's the kind of thing that happens and man i'm shaving my head but if i had a lot of hair you know i, I would have pulled my hair you know when i realized that i had to redo everything again so have a nice day have a nice night have a nice weekend have a nice week and I'll see you soon.